think for this one, this is how I'm going to be the whole time. I think because I'm chilly. <laughs> What's up, guys? Welcome back to Feast or Famine with the Youngs. <laughs> Are you cold? I'm freezing. It's cold in here. It's cold outside, and it's cold in here because we don't have the heat on because it hums, and we don't want that in the audio. I need to get closer to you. Okay. It is, like, really cold in here. It is getting cold. Let me see what it says. Does it say 65? I can't read it. I don't know. It's below 70. <sighs> Did you, you say we are the Youngs? I don't know. I think we laughed. Okay, that's fine. Welcome back to Feaster Fan with the Youngs. We are the Youngs. That was really weird. That was weird. I'm never doing that again. <laughs> I'm never doing that again. Okay. That just felt wrong. No. It... Eey, icky. What was that? I think that that's you being cold. That is me being cold. Hold on. But I, also, I really have to adjust my mic. Hold on. Okay. But also, I'm not doing that again. That just felt wrong. It wasn't that weird. It was weird. We've been doing this for 50, 60 something episodes. I thought you were going to say years. Like, years. 50 years. We have not. Anyway, like we're pretty much all tapped out, y'all, because uh, <laughs> this is this has been a marathon day and I just stopped changing shirts because it's cold. Same. Um, yeah. Well, you have a topic that you're pretty passionate about today. So we had a little bit ago a guest by the name of Mark. Mm -hmm. on i think it was our most recent guest i think depending on when depending on how you schedule it his page is coming up okay coming up too depending on how his name's mark he was in studio he owns omen coffee company here in st louis Mm -hmm. and he made a comment about sorry about (laughs) being successful in business these days and how there's a lot of people that are just want to, they want a quick buck. They want to get it easy and they just do the bare minimum. I think what he said. But then, hold on. Okay. It's, he, he, he said, I'm getting there. Okay. He said that these days to be successful, all you really have to do because of all of that is just do it right. Period. Yeah. And that's good because that makes it easy easier if you're just a person that just wants to excel but it also is kind of disappointing that it is mm-hmm. gotten to that and i i definitely agree with what he said i think in relation to what he was saying he was i think relating it back to like coffee because that's what he does he owns mm-hmm. coffee shop and he, he just um, opened and it's super i mean successful already yeah uh so i think in regards to that um if we're thinking broad i think that that is pretty much true and i'm not sure i'm not sure that there's anything wrong with that necessarily to a certain extent um really what it came down to was um people are looking at their competition yeah and basing how much effort they put into on what their competition is doing yeah so as long as i'm it's basically if you're not if as long as I'm not last or as long as I'm not the worst, as long as I don't suck, I'm doing better than... I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. Yeah. Um, and I, it's funny because he mentioned this and I was going to mention say this, but we moved on and I didn't say it. But it's like the analogy of if we're running from a bear, all I have to do is be faster than the slowest person that's running from the bear. Yeah. You don't have to be faster than the bear. Because that person's going to get eaten. You'll be fine as long as you're faster than that person. Yeah. But what is that going to do? You're not going to, I mean, you'll survive the bear, but is that all we're doing is, are we doing Surviving? this business to survive or are we tr- doing this to win? Right. Right. And something, you know, personally, and just, this is just kind of like how I view things as a business owner. Um, I, I think that I sometimes get too caught up in what other people are doing. And I don't do things necessarily based off of what other people are doing. Um, I just, I get, how did I say it? How did I say it earlier? It's basically like imposter syndrome. I, how did I say it earlier? I don't remember. I basically like get too caught up in what other people are doing, but the problem for me is that 
I constantly want to do it better. I want, and I push myself to not be just good enough or not just do it right, but be the best. And she wants, like what she's saying, it's, it's essentially an imposter syndrome type of mindset in that you're seeing all these people and you're either A, feeling less than mm -hmm. based on what, because you're comparing yourself in that way, or you're like, hey, I need to be better than that person. Yeah. Because they're where I So then that's like true be. unhealth, uh, healthy, but sometimes unhealthy competition. But I think that's a good mindset to have. Mm -hmm. But what the mindset should be is, I don't want to just be better than this person. I want to be the best. And that's that's kind of my mindset behind a lot of things uh and it sounds kind of arrogant i realize that but i mean it is truly just like how i feel like i everything that i do i want to be the best so we're not we're not here trying to just survive getting eaten by the bear we're here trying to get so far from the bear that we don't have to worry about the bear anymore yeah so yeah. if you're just doing what the bare minimum is <laughs> to not get eaten by the bear, then guess what happens when that bear finishes that person? Yeah, they're gonna go to the They're next. gonna go after the next person. If that's you, you might get eaten by the bear. Yeah, and that's why like, I think when it comes to, when it comes to like thinking about this, it was a really eye-opening thing when he said this because I felt a lot of con conviction with it. I was like, I, I think that we don't necessarily do that like we don't do things that are like oh it's just it's good enough um but I did feel the conviction in the way that like I sometimes hold on to too many things or I wait too long or I put things off because I won't do it half-assed um and sometimes that's kind of a crutch because I am I'm waiting because I'm comparing I'm comparing myself currently to whatever I'm working on to the next person because they've already done it um and I don't want to do it because I'm comparing myself to them so then I wait and then it's not relevant or it doesn't matter or I never finish it because I want it to be the best that's where I think it gets unhealthy um and that's where you shouldn't be comparing yourself to your competition right and it's okay to like look at those people, but this this just falls back to the imposter syndrome thing. And we we did this, I think it was the second ever episode we did mm -hmm. was on imposter syndrome. But it's it's very very relevant all the time. Yeah. Because we are always falling back into that occasionally. We have to pick ourselves up and reevaluate like our mindset so we can shift from that. Mm -hmm. um, but it's okay to look to those people and see what everybody's doing. But your mindset should never be comparing yourself to what that person's doing. Yeah. Your mindset should always be just doing the best that you can possibly do mm -hmm. and then trying to exceed that always. Yeah. And I think that it depends on like what you're talking about here. Like if you're talking about something as like scientific as coffee, um, some, doing coffee right, I think there is an actual answer to. But as far as like running a business or doing what we do, which is like, very emotion and art driven um and like what we are inspired by there's not always a right answer well, so it's not about doing it right necessarily it's it's about doing what you're passionate about and what you feel is right for you well, and, and what's right for you is not what's right for everybody else and that's why comparing just the, it doesn't work in this line of work right and to feed off what Mark said and our line of work, that it, the concept is still the same. There's only like the right. There's a right way to make coffee products that's mm -hmm. going to be the best. There's a right way to make the best photograph photographs to sh take the best photographs, edit the best photographs to make the best videos. But that's not what's going to set you apart. Right. What's going to set you apart is the experience that comes with that, mm -hmm. and that's what Margaret Omen is doing. Yeah. is making an experience out of coming to the coffee shop. Right. Building connections to bring people together right. within that community and mm -hmm. to just expand that community so that people around town come in and they know each other, like a small town type feel. Yeah. Same with us. It's not as much about, it is and it isn't, about the product that we're offering, but also the experience that we're giving this couple. Right. 
Right. And if you can excel at all of those things, then you're going to excel across the board. Mm-hmm. And you don't have to worry about everybody else. Yeah. I think... I think in general, it's so easy to compare yourself to other people um, around you. And it's it gets hard. Like, I, I sometimes, I've talked about this before, like, I sometimes have to take social media breaks um, because I'll catch myself comparing to other people. And it's, I mean, when you're comparing yourself to other people and other photographers or whatever the case might be, um, you have... N- maybe you have some sort of idea, but more often than not, you probably just don't know what their journey has looked like, or you don't know what their struggles are, or, um, if they're comparing themselves, like you just, you just don't know because social media is only a tiny, it's glimpse. only a tiny glimpse of what you see. Um, and with what we, what we do, it's literally curated content. So we're only showing you what we want to show you. Um, we try to do we like, try to be transparent you, like, real, but like as far as the content like from weddings mm-hmm. yeah we're only going to show you the stuff that we want you to see you to see and we want to attract those clientele mm-hmm. but we also make sure that we are showing up on stories to be real too yeah so it's a little bit of everything yeah as far as that goes but in general yeah you're not seeing everything you're seeing a small little glimpse yeah which is ultimately going to affect you if you focus on it too much right and one thing that we have always said anytime somebody comes to us to talk about imposter syndrome and we said it the last time is you don't have to follow people that are i don't want to say your competition but like if a photographer that you're following you find yourself looking at their work and all always just like find yourself comparing Mm -hmm. where you're at to them and what they're doing and playing the, well, why didn't I get that wedding type of stuff? Unfollow them. Yeah. I mean, I, I do not, I do not follow, um, a lot of photographers in our area. Um, and there's multiple reasons for that, but one of them being, and honestly, the main reason being is because I don't want to compare myself to them because because we're in the same market, because we're in the same area, we're shooting in the same spaces. Like I don't want to see something and then unintentionally, um, do the same thing. Now that might happen regardless. And I'm sure that it has happened. Um, but I, I just want to stay in my lane, do my thing and find my inspiration from people that are not in my market. Because, um, I mean, let's just be real guys. Like there is such thing as competition in our industry. I know that there's like a huge, like, like the community over competition, community over thing. competition. Like I get that. And I support that fully, but there is such thing as a healthy competition and it's necessary. And, and that's ultimately what's going to push the industry forward. Yeah. And the healthy competition, like Alex says, it pushes each individual entrepreneur or photographer or whatever the case might be to be better, not, in a negative way of like, I need to be better than this person, but just to be better in general. And then collectively, it all just makes the industry better as a whole. There's healthy competition really pushes and excels everyone. Um, And that can come in, in ways of like knowing your market, knowing, you know, what prices are looking like in your market and knowing what your clients look for comparing loosely with that sort of thing because it is important to know like where your pricing should be based off of the market but then that's also a lot convoluted like there's so many things that go into your pricing but that is one of the components that I believe to be very important um and something you should be loosely comparing yourself to but when it comes to like your work and what you're inspired by and what you know you're doing with your business based off of what somebody else is doing with their business um I, I think that you should look for inspiration outside of your market. Um, and even outside of your market, though, like the inspiration thing is just that. Inspiration and the comparison game, which ultimately leads to imposter syndrome, are not the same thing. So if you have somebody that you're following and you've been following for inspiration, and then all of a sudden you start to see this trickle effect where now all of a sudden you're comparing yourself to them Mm -hmm. and it's starting to affect you negatively. They're not an inspiration anymore. Yeah. That's your sign to hit that unfollow button. That's time to 
go ahead and remove them. You can add them later if you feel like you want to add them because you've gotten past that block. Yeah. But that is when it becomes negative and toxic mm -hmm. is when it stops being just about being inspired and you start saying, well, how come I can't get a wedding like that? Right. Yeah. I mean, it definitely like when we're talking about like follows on Instagram, I feel like sometimes that can get <laughs> like a little personal. They're like, oh, you don't follow me on Instagram. Like I, th I think that you can still be friends and, you know, with people that you don't necessarily follow on Instagram. Like I, I am friends with photographers all over the city, but I don't follow all of them because I don't, it's not that I don't care about their content. I just don't want to compare myself to theirs. Um, I mean, it's just as simple as that for me. Yeah. Yeah. And really like this, this kind of, this topic, because of what it was inspired, the quote, the conversation was inspired on is loosely based on that conversation. Mm -hmm. But when you fall into imposter syndrome, if you look at it on the bright side, when you're doing that, that means you're striving for excellence. Yeah. You're trying to get better. Mm -hmm. So when you see that you are comparing yourself to this person and saying, well, I'm not as good as that person or they did it better or whatever, instead of doing that, you need to be just looking at being better, mm -hmm. period. Not period. being better than this person, yeah. but being better. Yeah. And being in competition with yourself. Because ultimately, when you are constantly getting better on your own and you're looking at your work last year and all of a sudden your work is significantly better, that is going to be a better comparison comparison and better inspiration to continue to push forward yeah. than anything else and any other comparison game you will find on social media. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm not saying that like everyone has to have the same mindset as us or as me, um, but just in the general sense of things, that's kind of like where I lie is I don't, I don't aim to be like so-and-so or, you know, whatever. I just aim to be the best. And She aims to be a better Veronica than she was and, last year. And when I say the best, I'm not saying the number one best photographer in the world or, you know, whatever. But that would be great. Or right? like Harper's Bazaar, the best. That like, would be great though, right? I would love that. <laughs> but I mean, like it, when I say the best, that is what the best means to me and what means to Alex and what means to our clients. Um, and so it's, it's a perspective thing, you know, um, and everyone has different clients. Everyone has a different market. Um, and our clients are, to be honest, are not for the faint of heart. Uh, we have luxury clients and not every photographer is going to want that or be able to handle that. Um, so I, I, that's what the best means to me anyway. It's very, per, it's very personal. Yeah. And realistically, it really, it comes down to being the best for the client mm -hmm. while they are your client. Yeah. Yes. I am far better than I was three years ago mm -hmm. because I've gotten better, period. Yeah. So my best now is definitely far better than it was then. Right. Did I give them my best then? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You're damn right I did. Because yeah. that's... That's what you're supposed to do. That's what we need to do. Yeah. I'm not giving them my bare minimum just because I'm there. Oh, they'll never notice that. So I'm not going to worry about that. Yeah. That's not, that's not, that's not our, it. that's not our beliefs on how we are the best version of ourselves. Right. I'm not going to do the bare minimum just because they won't notice the rest. Of, they won't notice if it's not there. Yeah. I'm going to do the best for that wedding, for what I'm physically capable of at this moment in time. Yeah. Because for us, what that means what being the best means is doing our best to serve that client mm -hmm. the best way possible. And, uh, we just are not people who cut corners. We are not people who, um, overlook details. Like we're very detail oriented. So, um, you know, even if it's like a client that I can't say that we've personally had this, but like, even if it, it was a client that like, just for example, again, we have not personally had this, but if it was a client that like maybe disrespected us or something, I'm not going to turn around and be like, well, I'm not going to try my best. I'm going to do my best regardless. Um, because that is my values and it's a two way street. Like I, I feel, I feel good about myself when I know that I've done everything that I can 
for the person hiring me, whether mm-hmm. they are being nice to me or not, whether they're appreciative or not, I know that I fulfilled my role mm-hmm. and that makes me feel good. And that makes me feel like I did the best. Right. Um, so that was just like a random example, but yeah. I think when we strive for personal excellence and just being the better us than we were previously and focus primarily and solely on that Mm -hmm. before anything else is one of the best possible ways to avoid falling into imposter syndrome and the embarrassing game because you're so focused on just being a better you and delivering a better product that you offer Mm -hmm. than worrying about what anybody else is doing yeah yeah so it's like a distraction but ultimately you're gonna get better and you're gonna exceed yourself and it's Mm going to just continue to build that motivation and just you're going to and your confidence and your confidence and you're just going to keep getting better yeah yeah for sure it's a very short one but (laughs) it's i mean we can say the same thing over and over again i know people including us yeah fall victim to imposter syndrome Mm -hmm. constantly yeah and just the idea of focusing on you is probably the best way to avoid that yeah that's why i mean like our our circle is very small and we do that intentionally um you know a lot of people thrive on having a lot of friends and i love that for them but we we thrive on just genuinely like making genuine connections and then as far as like business goes and having like business friends i mean we just like we stay in our lane yeah i mean and we mind our own business um, we've I, got business friends from all sorts of businesses. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, um, I started to see a turn in like my personal issue with imposter syndrome and comparing and that sort of thing. When I just made the decision, I was like, let me just stay in my lane, stay on my path and not worry about the other path that everybody else is on. Um, because then that's when it gets rocky and that's when it's like hard and to keep going and like things like that. So like, uh, listen, the rest of that shit's for the birds. Like I just focus on me and when you can focus on yourself and value yourself and what you do and put, and put work behind that and making yourself the best version of yourself, then it's ultimately just going to make you more successful in every area of your life. Mic drop. I've had a lot of those recently. Today? Yeah. Well, today, (laughs) quote unquote, because, you know, this is like a month's worth of today. (laughs) That's like my new phrase recently. Have you noticed that? What? That shit's for the birds. That's because we've been hanging out with Chris and Nicole a lot. And Chris has said, that's for the birds. Probably. Really? Yeah. I don't think so. I'm about to verify that. Ask him. He has said that. I don't think so. For years and years and years. I... I don't know. That's like been like my phrase. Like when I don't like resonate with something and I don't like that, or it's like energy that I don't want to receive, or it's something that like I don't need in my life. I'm like, that shit's for the birds. Yeah. Chris has said that for a long time. I I think you've subconsciously picked that up. Probably. Probably. That's our brother for those who don't know. Yeah. Um, It's a very short one, but that's okay. Yeah. We need need some of these sometimes. Yeah. Any other um, valuable things that you have to say? imposter syndromes for the birds <laughs> that shit's for the birds <laughs> oh my goodness no but it's, it's it's a real thing if you find yourself there just hit everybody's that been button. everybody's we're, been there. we're all been we've all been there just focus on you and what you can do to make yourself better and do it mm-hmm. period if you're better than you were last week or if you're better now than you were last year if you're a wedding photographer or wedding videographer go look at your first several films yeah yeah they probably suck compared to what you're doing now i'm glad you finished that sentence they probably suck compared to what you're doing now (laughs) i'm like damn alex that's rude (laughs) um okay well that's pretty much it um i hope you guys enjoyed this i hope that it was somewhat helpful insightful relatable i'm sure that it's relatable um so yeah that's pretty much it uh trying to think of if there is anything else that we wanted to touch on i don't think so anything else happening in the world that we could address i mean by the time they hear this it might not be a thing anymore Uh, yeah that's true it i mean i don't think there's anything happening (laughs) i'm ready for 
holiday season. And yeah. Not busy season. Yeah, same. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed. Um, and we will catch you guys on the next one. Peace.